Hi, and thanks for choosing Planet Rentals for your next outdoor adventure. Uh, first off, we're going to go over some general trailer information that is pertinent to all of our different camping trailers, and then we'll go specifically over the camping trailer that you have reserved. First of all, when you come for your reservation, make sure you plan enough time to get paperwork filled out and the trailer hooked up. Uh, when appointments are rushed, we always find that then, you know, some information is skipped over or, you know, we're not as thorough as we'd like to be. So make sure you plan plenty of time for your pickup appointment. Secondly, make sure that you have your driver's license and the insurance card for the vehicle that will be towing our trailer available and ready for us. We'll need copies of those along with the contract that you sign. Now it's important that you know what type of site you're going to with the trailer. Uh, many sites have water, power, and sewer hookups, and many sites have none of that at all. And how the trailer works and operates is quite dependent on that, and so you'll want to know those differences before you head out there. And then I wanted to go over some general driving tips for you. When you're towing a trailer, it's always very important to drive at a very slow and safe speed. Um, you know, it's just not worth pushing. You know, plan some extra time in your trip so that you have plenty of time to get where you're going. It's easier on our trailer and easier on your tow vehicle if you just take it easy. Secondly, because you'll be a longer rig, you need to make sure that you're careful when you're cornering. You need to take corners a little bit wider and you know plan for that sort of thing it's always smart to know exactly where you're going have you know good directions or have driven there before because it's hard to make evasive maneuvers or u-turns and that sort of thing when you have a trailer in tow and then whenever you're backing up the trailer make sure that you have someone there helping you back up uh, to help you make sure you don't of course run into any obstacles and that sort of thing and then uh, when you're setting up the trailer, you want to make sure that you're being careful of anything that's overhead on the trailer or around the sides of it. Many of our trailers have slide outs or pop downs and that sort of thing that extend from the side of the trailer. So before you get it all set up, you want to make sure there's plenty of clearance all around the trailer. And then also we want you to really treat our trailers well. We have what we feel the best trailers and the best pricing out there of any RV dealer. And a big part of that is because we really feel like we have the best renters. So we do put some responsibility on you to make sure you take care of our units. Uh, you know, we suggest taking your shoes off when you go inside the trailer. That really just helps with cleanup. It helps maintain the floor and the, you know, the furniture, all that sort of thing. We suggest that you try not to take the trailer off-road. We suggest that you kept, keep it nice and swept and clean. And then, you know, help with eliminating horseplay and other rough activities that may happen in or outside the trailer just to help you know keep it nicer and cleaner for those that come after you and then also wanted to note that all of our trailers have a spare tire on them of course but that spare tire is not intended for long distance driving that spare tire is intended to get you somewhere to get a tire repaired and replaced so that um, you know you can continue on with your trip so please don't plan on using the spare tire to drive any extended distance if something were to happen to one of the original tires on the trailer. We of course keep all those tires in great working condition for you. Now we'll go over the general hookup of the trailer to the tow vehicle here. So the first thing we're going to do is lower the trailer down onto the ball of the vehicle. And then every trailer comes with a safety pin. This is what's going to ensure that the trailer is locked on to the truck securely. If the pin goes through, you know you've got it set up correctly and it can't come undone from the ball of the vehicle. Next we have the safety chains and they um, have hooks that clip onto the, the security hole on the vehicle. I like to cross the chains once or twice with one going this way and the other one going this direction. Next is the hookup for the lights on the trailer. All of our trailers have this seven pin RV connection um, and so you need to make sure your vehicle can accommodate that type of plug. And then lastly is the breakaway cable for the trailer. What this does is if the trailer were to come unhooked from the vehicle somehow, this cable will pull and activate the brakes on the trailer so that it doesn't keep rolling away. All right, and then if you're using one of our equalizer hitches, you'll want to lower the trailer down onto the ball of the tow vehicle, just enough to get that pin locked in, and then you want to swing the arms up onto the side of the trailer and lock those in. Then lower the rest of the trailer weight down onto the tow vehicle. What that does is help transfer some of the weight of the trailer up to the front tires of the tow vehicle for cornering and braking, 
and it also helps with sway control as you're driving down the road. Now be mindful of the things that you put inside the trailer. If you're using one of our equalizer hitches, make sure that does not go inside the trailer on the linoleum. We've had quite a few trailers damaged that way, as well as you know generators and other rough equipment like bikes and things like that. Please be careful with the flooring of our trailers. All right, once you arrive at your campsite, the first thing you're gonna need to do is level the trailer. So with the level that's provided with the trailer, you'll wanna check for side to side levelness using the back bumper of the trailer. So you just put that on there. And then uh, depending on which side is high or low, you'll raise that side up using the tires of the trailer and the blocks that we provide. With these blocks, you'll tuck them up underneath the trailer tire. and back up onto them. If you needed to go even higher, you can build a little ramp using these blocks to go even too high here. Once you back up onto the blocks, then you check your levelness again and make sure you're nice and level. And then once your vehicle's level side to side, you wanna chalk the tires using the included chalks. Just one on each side of the tire. Tuck them in nice and firm, and then the same on the other side of the trailer on one of the tires. Okay, now that you're level side to side and the tires are chalked on the trailer really well, it's now time to unhook it from your tow vehicle and check levelness front to back. To check that levelness, you can just place the level here on the front A-frame of the trailer, and then you're going to use the tongue jack raised or lowered in order to level the trailer front to back. Now you can drop the stabilizers that are on the trailer. Uh, there's a provided crank that you connect here. You just attach it to the end and just crank those stabilizers down until they're on the ground. Uh, once they touch the ground, I usually do another two cranks to support a little bit of the weight of the trailer, uh, but you don't support much of the weight. In fact, these stabilizers are not used to level the trailer whatsoever. They're just used to help eliminate some of the rocking motion of the trailer when you're walking around inside. Now when your trip's over and it's time to hook up and leave, you're going to do all of those steps we went over just in reverse. So first you're going to raise those stabilizer jacks that we lowered. Then you're going to hook up to the vehicle and of course raise the tongue jack all the way. Then remove the chocks that are on the tires on both sides of the trailer. Then pull the trailer off of any leveling blocks side to side and you're good to go. Now we're going to go over the setup of our Coleman bunkhouse trailer. This is a great trailer that features a couple large bunk beds and a queen bed up front. Here on the front of the trailer we have a couple propane tanks uh, with a cover over them. Uh, both of those tanks will be full and ready to go for your trip. By convention we have you use the passenger side tank first and then roll over to the driver's side tank if needed and we'll show you how to do that here. Now the propane cover does have an access hole here on the top that you can open up to access the propane tanks to turn them on or off and to switch between the tanks. In order to refill the propane, you do need to pull that cover all the way off and we'll do that to show you where the lever is to switch between the two tanks. So here the lever is pointing at the passenger's tank or you can flip it over to point at the driver's side tank. To open up either of the bottles, you just open the top valve all of the way. Um, so you'd only need to change the lever if for some reason you ran out of propane on the passenger side. But start with this tank and roll over to that tank. Then here behind the propane tanks are the two batteries for the trailer. There's nothing you really need to do with those. When you plug in the trailer to full-time power if you have hookups at your site or to a generator, those batteries will charge up. But they run most of the appliances inside the trailer. Here on the back corner of the trailer on the driver's side, is your city water connection and this would be if you have water hookups at your site. You would take a garden hose and one end of the hose would screw right onto the trailer like such and the other end of the hose would screw onto the spigot at your hookup site. Now we include a pressure regulator that needs to actually screw onto the spigot before your hose. This pressure regulator limits the amount of pressure that gets into your hose and into the lines inside the trailer. Uh, just to ensure that the you know pressure doesn't exceed their capacity. Then also back here on the back corner is where you will plug in the power cord. You just pop open the cover and one end of the power cord plugs in here to the back and the other end would plug into the power pole if you had hookup sites or into your generator. We also include this adapter that adapts it down to be a regular power outlet but many generators and many hookup sites have this 30 amp configuration. 
So either way you're covered there. Now located underneath the trailer on the back corner on the driver's side is your sewer connection. If you had sewer hookups at your campsite, when you get to your site you can hook on the sewer hose and run it into the hole in the ground that's designated for that sewer hookup. Otherwise this would be used to empty the tanks at the end of your trip. To connect the sewer hose you just rotate it over these different notches here until it locks into place and then you would first empty your black water. The black water is the black handle here and the black water contains all of the drainage from the toilet. To empty that you would pull it straight out this way, wait until it finishes emptying, then you would pull your gray water here which is the gray handle straight outwards and wait until that finishes emptying. The gray water contains your sink and your shower water and so that kind of helps wash out all of the sewage. Then you can run plenty of fresh water down the toilet and sinks and shower to help flush everything out. Now the sewer hose stores away here in the bumper. You just remove this cap, push it on in. All right, here on the passenger side of the trailer are three service access panels for some of the appliances inside. This is for the fridge. This is the hot air vent for the heater, and then this is the service access panel for the hot water heater. So all of these items you shouldn't need to access or get into. All of those appliances turn on and off from the inside the trailer. But I do note that a couple of these do get hot to the touch, so just be mindful of the items and uh, people getting around those so that no one gets burned. Then here is where you would fill your water tank if you don't have water hookups at your site. You would just put a hose up to this inlet here and fill it up until it gurgles back out at you, at which point you know it's full. So all of this water will go into a tank that's underneath the trailer. In order to pump that water up to any of the faucets or the toilet, you would have to run the water pump. Um, and that's inside the trailer, and we'll show you that here in a minute. All right, there's a bar here located by the front door. It's handy because it can kind of go over the door to help keep it closed during travel. It can pop out this way to help you get in and out of the trailer, or it can fold out of the way the other direction. Then here below the front door are the steps. To pull them out, um, just pull them towards you and then flip over the bottom step like I'll show you. You're good to go. All right, located right inside the front door of the trailer is kind of the control panel that controls most of the stuff in the trailer. First here on the left side, you have your water heater, which you can light with gas or electric. That water heater holds and heats six gallons at a time. If you don't have hookups at your site uh, with full-time power, then you would want to heat the water using gas, and you would just flip that switch on. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes for that hot water to get hot, so we ask that you only turn the hot water heater on you know, 10 or 15 minutes before you need it, and then turn it off when you're done. If you do have full-time power at your site, go ahead and use this one, or both of them, to help heat the water. Then you have your water pump. If you don't have full-time water at your site and you're using the water underneath the trailer in the tank that you filled with your hose, then you would need to run the water pump in order to pump that water up to the faucets in the trailer and the toilet. Here you've got a switch for your exterior lights and a switch for your interior lights. And then in the upper left corner are all of your meters. You have a meter for your battery, your fresh water, your black water, and your gray water. Then you have your awning button to extend the awning or retract the awning. You would just press and hold the button until the awning goes all the way out or when the awning comes all the way back in. A special note about the awnings, we like to provide those for your uh, convenience to use, but they are very temperamental and it's one of the items that is very easy to damage. When the awning's out it becomes a big sail and really can catch the wind quite easily and rip it from the trailer. It also collects water easily and cannot support the weight of the water. So please, if you ever leave the trailer, even for just a couple minutes, please get that awning put back up. If there's any weather outside at all, please put the awning back up. Or if you just don't want to risk it at all, it's probably a good, uh, good idea just to keep the awning up. Now this is your switch to move the big slide out on the side of the trailer in or out. You would just press or hold that button until you hear a clicking noise that it makes at the end of its retraction or extension. All right, I'm gonna press and hold that slide out button to move the slide out out, and then you'll hear the clicking noise that happens at the end.
So just as soon as you hear that, just release the button. And it's the same for on the way in. The stove here works off of the propane in the trailer. To light up any of the burners, you would just turn it to light and then spark the corresponding burner with a lighter or there's a sparking knob here that you can turn to ignite it. And the same thing is with the oven. Here on this side you would just put it to the pilot light and then spark it or again with a lighter inside the oven. Here on the fridge is the control to either run the fridge off plug-in power electric by going to auto with that switch or by running it off propane by going to that switch. When you run it on propane or gas, you'll see this gas light come on on the bottom yellow. When it's solid, everything is good to go. But if you ran out of propane or if there was an air bubble in the line, that light would start flashing indicating that the fridge is not lit. If that does happen, remedy the problem, flip it to the off position for 10 or 15 seconds, and then back on to reignite the fridge. And then you have your temperature setting over here to the right. We recommend setting 3 or 4. Located back here by the bathroom is the thermostat that will control the heating and the cooling inside the trailer. To switch between those, you would press this button. It will first go to fan, which you want to leave on AU, which is auto. Then it will go to the cooling setting in the trailer, which you can set with an up or down, and that will control the air conditioner. Now the air conditioner is only going to run if you have plug-in power, a 30 amp connection, or a generator that's powerful enough to run the air conditioner. Then you can cycle down to your furnace setting here and again set the temperature and that furnace will kick on and off as needed to maintain the temperature inside the trailer. Now here in the bathroom is the toilet of course. To flush the toilet you would step on the handle here on the front. Now if you wanted some water to flush when you uh, flush and you don't have full time water at your site you would need to turn on the pump in order to put some water into the toilet bowl. Now we include the RV safe toilet paper for you to use during your trip. We don't want you to use any other toilet paper and we need to make sure that nothing else ends up in the toilet. No cleaning rags, no disinfectant wipes, no paper towels, etc. Only our RV safe toilet paper. And we also provide the chemical to put inside the toilet. This chemical is uh, used to help break down the waste and eliminate some of the odor. You just open it up and there are these individual tablets in there that you would just drop inside the toilet and flush down. We recommend one every other day. Now the dinette here can fold down into a bed. To do that you would just pull the table off of the poles here. And then the table would get placed down here at the level of the cushions. Then you'd grab a couple of these cushions to fill in the gap. And you've got a nice size bed. Now this sofa also folds down into a bed. To do that, just grab the bottom here, fold it flat. Here towards the front of the trailer is a TV, DVD, CD, and AM, FM radio. So that you would put the DVDs in here and it would be played by the TV. Now the TV, the air conditioner, and the microwave all will only work if you have power hookups at your site or if you're running a generator. Now we include a user manual and a cleaning checklist with each of the trailers. So if you had a question you could definitely refer to that manual. Uh, but the cleaning checklist is good because it gives you a list of items to go over. Um, and the general rule of thumb is to try to return the trailer in as clean a shape as when you took it. Um, we also ask that you just be careful with what you, you know, bring inside the trailer. We suggest kicking off your shoes when you come inside, which really just helps the floor stay clean, helps the furniture wear and tear and that sort of thing. But we sure appreciate you renting from us and we hope to see you in the future.